I have definitely spent easily more than a thousand hours playing Minecraft. And if you actually added it up, it is probably thousands, the amount, which is ridiculous given how many other things I should be doing. I once spent three hours on Minecraft walking in a single, well, running. I took lots of food, I'm not an idiot. I spent three hours traveling in one direction in the hopes of finding cocoa beans so that I could make a brown sheep. What's that? What am I doing? What am I doing that I've built? We've got a log flume. You know, we've got a theme park. We've got, we've got an archery thing where if you shoot the centre target on three archery targets in less than a minute, it dispenses prizes at you. I'm, I'm 35. Yeah, I love racing games. You'll often find, I think, particularly near launch, they're the best way to showcase graphically what a new console can do. They, you know, with all the landscapes, they look beautiful. Um, although, you can take it in if you're watching someone play it, but when you're playing it, you, you spend 90% of the time you know, watching the road or the competitors that you're creeping up on. For all I know, Forza Horizon 2 could just be a rear bumper and tarmac simulator. Civilization, probably my favourite series. I've always loved Civilization. Although, because I can't play them that often or back to back, I've probably played the tutorial level in Civilization 3 more than I've played any other level in all the other strategy games I've ever played combined. I've, I've never been able to invest the time to get good at them. However, if you want somebody to show you how to send out a scout party to look for a bear in Civilization 3, I'm your guy. Sonic the Hedgehog, yeah. He's good in the 90s, wasn't he? He's very big in the 90s. Now he's, he sort of looms around in about the 70% on Metacritic. He's n not really had a good game. The worst one, probably, the 2006 Sonic the Hedgehog. Absolutely dire. I think these, these days Sonic's about as popular as a tiger made of fire in a crash. All Sega have got to do is make a game that looks like Sonic 4 that takes the physics from the first three Sonic games. And they've failed to do it for like 15 years. It blows, it's, it, if Sega, it is that easy. If you just make Sonic 4, but put the physics of the first three in it, it would be amazing. And I cannot understand why they don't just do it. I had a mate who had the 32X and the Mega CD as well. So it was like this Frankenstein's monster of a console. I, I looked into this because I knew I was coming in and the combined total then, if you'd have had those three things, was £630. That's over a grand if you allow for inflation now. And there was only six games that needed all three of those things if you bought them. I'll tell you the six games. So you spent over a grand in today's money for that setup. These are the six games that you could play exclusively with that setup. And they are Fahrenheit, uh, Corpse Killer, no idea, Night Trap. That one, that one at least got in the news, but only because it got banned and was dreadful. Supreme Warrior, I'm not, I'm not making these up, these are like genuinely, um, Surgical Strike, the enhanced version of which was only released in Brazil, and Slam City with Scotty Pippin. That's it, that's, that's it. That not, it's not bad for a grand, plus you've got to buy the games, obviously. Where did Sega go wrong? It's a mystery, isn't it? PlayStation 1, to me, means one thing and one thing only. Brian Lara Cricket. I'm really looking forward to this one, and there's a noisy crowd in here today. First year at university, friend in the room next to me, had a PlayStation 1, it's the only game we ever played. It, it is still, it was, I, think, I think it was the Brian Lara Cricket 99, it remains the best game. It has, you had like, you, you, it, it looked perfect, it looked like cricket, because it was all 3D, so it looked r real like cricket. You had all the teams, all the tournament play, everything, and you, it, even, it even had practice nets, you could go and practice your stroke in. We just spent hours, like as, as teenagers, spent hours practicing our swing in a virtual reality cricket game. The first thing I ever had was an Amstrad CPC 464. Um, so that was my thing, it was cassette loading. Um, I think if, if you've never had to load a game from a cassette, I don't think we can really be friends. I sort of come from that generation. You've, you've got to know the pain of that. You used to be able to buy books that just had the code for games in it. Um, so it was, I, it's sort it's sort of like Ikea games. You sort of build your own games. So they give you the 
flat pack or the code or whatever and you'd sit there and type it in and the idea was you buy this book of code you type it in and then you can save it to a cassette and, and you give yourself the game whereas what actually happens is you spend six hours trying to type in character perfect this entire like pages of gibberish and then you'll get to press you'll say type run or whatever it was i think that was running basic on the answer and then it'd probably get about two lines through and then it would just go line 20 error or something so line 20 was the second line young people you wrote in tens do you remember that no you've got no idea have you yeah so yeah so you'd think you'd get this book of games and you'd be able to play it but actually you'd code it you try to run it and it wouldn't work so you've typed something wrong and i think as a six-year-old with a bike i never really fully embraced debugging I bought this last year so of all the things, of all the handheld gaming that I could have bought in 2014, you know, smartphone games or 3DS or PS Vita or anything like that, I purchased Ball, the original Game & Watch. Do you mind if I make it beep? Can I make it beep? Can you hear that? Look at it on there. Oh. I like Assassin's Creed. I think I like the Roman ones and the piratey ones the best, uh, not so keen on the, the snowy one with the 10 hour tutorial and the immediate fails for no reason. And I didn't like the one where they forgot to put skin on the characters' faces. Uh, there's, there's been lots of funny games over the years, but I was, I was thinking this through and I think, I think the funniest game of all time is probably Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. 30 quid for a demo. It's hilarious. I don't get it. I don't get it. I've tried so many times to get into Final Fantasy and, or just Japanese RPGs generally. It's just, it's just whiny teenage angst a lot of the time. It's just, and there's there's so much reading. Like if you wanted to read bad writing, you could just buy a bad book. I think it's because of when I grew up. But for me, I think of video games as platform games. That's the first thing I think of because I grew up with the golden age of Mario and Sonic. So just running left to right, jumping, collecting things, that was my thing. Although I think, I think I think that more because that was mine. I think people who are maybe five, ten years older than me probably think of it more like asteroids, space invaders, things like that, whereas younger people probably think of games more as like running over prostitutes. So that's progress. <laughs> He's gaming's Mickey Mouse, isn't he, Mario? He's, he, you know, it's similar to Mickey. He's <laughs> I'm doing that like he's a real person. <laughs> you know, my mate Mick, you know, big ears. Yeah. <laughs>